The world's second largest country is currently on the verge of collapse. If this sounds unsettling or frightening, buckle up, because the reality of Canada's current state is about as thrilling as a roller coaster ride. This isn't a short-lived spectacle, it's a saga that has unfolded over the past few years. And it appears that a considerable number of people are bidding farewell to the Great White North. So, why this exodus? Well, folks are expressing sentiments like, I don't see my future in Canada, and, I just feel trapped. The country's challenges include inflation, soaring unemployment, and an alarming surge in violence and crime rates. The dream of owning or renting a home in Canada has become nearly impossible for almost 70% of the population. In the past decade, homelessness has doubled, painting a grim picture in a nation once hailed as the second best in the world. The immigration lines that were once filled with hopeful individuals seeking a better life in Canada now raise the question, how did we end up here? The answer lies in four distinct reasons, all of which we'll delve into in this video. So, fasten your seatbelts and join us as we navigate through the tumultuous terrain of Canada's current affairs. This isn't just a video, it's a journey through the unraveling narrative of a nation in flux. Stick around until the end you won't want to miss this. Canada, perched high above the map, boasts the title of the world's largest country. To the west lies the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean to the east, and the Arctic Ocean to the north. What's intriguing is that Canada shares the world's longest border with its neighbor, the United States. Astonishingly, around 80% of Canada's population resides within a hundred miles of this extensive border, with half of Canadians living below this line. In the intricate dance of provinces, Ontario takes center stage, contributing a substantial 40% to the country's GDP. The unique population distribution is heavily influenced by Canada's harsh winters, especially in the northern regions, where snow blankets the landscape, and lakes and rivers abound. 50% of the world's freshwater lakes are nestled within Canadian borders, showcasing the country's wealth in natural resources. Canada stands tall in possessing the fourth largest oil reserves globally, along with substantial deposits of potassium, uranium, coal, geothermal energy, and natural gas. With an abundance of water resources, 60% of Canada's energy is derived from hydrothermal plants making it the second largest producer of hydroelectric power generated from water. This energy fuels Canada's industries in real estate, mining, and manufacturing, predominantly concentrated in its provinces, thus attracting the majority of the population. Despite these favorable conditions, Canada has seen a sharp decline in its appeal over the past few years. Surprisingly, 45% of immigrants who arrived in 2021 are contemplating leaving. This shift is concerning, as a declining interest in Canadian nationality among immigrants is often a perilous sign. The primary reason behind this crisis is the soaring cost of living. A glance at the colored circle reveals the drastic change in housing prices over the last decade. Since 2018, housing prices have nearly doubled creating a substantial burden on the Canadian population. Notably, renowned Canadian vlogger from Waterloo shares that a one-bedroom, one-bathroom apartment that rented for $900 per month in 2018, amends a staggering $2,000 per month. This alarming rise in living expenses extends to property ownership, with mortgage rates skyrocketing from $1,400 to approximately $3,500 per month. In a country where the average monthly salary ranges from $4,000 to $6,000, these exorbitant housing costs pose a significant challenge. Coupled with high tax rates and the expenses of sustenance and travel, the affordability of rent or mortgage becomes a daunting question. Even with a monthly salary of $6,000, considered on the higher end of the spectrum for white-collar professionals. It becomes challenging for many Canadians to navigate the financial landscape. The situation becomes more pronounced when considering that the average annual salary in Canada is 6000 
translating to $5,000 per month. This economic scenario has triggered a significant shift in sentiment. With a considerable portion of newcomers and long-term residents alike re-evaluating their commitment to Canada. The ripple effects of this transformation in Canada's appeal are yet to unfold, shaping the nation's trajectory in the years to come. The survey reveals a stark reality. 63% of Canadians do not own their own homes, and many have given up the idea of ever owning one. This reluctance stems from the financial challenges that come with the scenario where, for instance, an annual salary of $60,000 is reduced to around $50,000 after taxes. Living in major cities like Vancouver or Waterloo could mean an annual rent of $20,000 to $25,000, leaving minimal funds for necessities such as food, car insurance, and medical insurance. The escalating housing prices present the primary obstacle for people in Canada, making it increasingly difficult to afford a decent home. The second significant challenge lies in the sluggish job market. Canada heavily relies on its natural resources, with the majority of its investment in the mining, manufacturing, and real estate sectors. This concentration has a cascading effect, diverting funds away from industries and into housing, resulting in a housing bubble. Moreover, Canada faces challenges in its oil and manufacturing industries. Oil, a significant contributor to Canada's GDP, faces a decline in demand due to economic shifts. The manufacturing industry, which once produced 3 million cars in 1999, has seen a substantial decrease to 1.4 million by 2021. Outsourcing to Mexico for cheaper labor costs has contributed to this decline. The third challenge is the oversupply of immigrants and students in Canada leading to fierce competition for jobs. Even skilled jobs such as IT, engineering or finance have become highly competitive. The influx of people, especially from South Asia, has saturated the labor market making it challenging for newcomers to secure employment, even in fields like finance or IT. Adding to the complex landscape is the rise in violence and crime. Canada, traditionally known for its safety, has witnessed an increase in random attacks, creating an atmosphere of fear, especially in urban areas. The post-COVID era has seen a surge in mental health issues. Unemployment, inflation, and stringent taxation contributing to a rise in crime rates. Unfortunately, the victims of these attacks are predominantly from Asian communities. Lastly, the once proud Canadian healthcare system has suffered a blow, affecting the pride Canadians took in their healthcare. These factors collectively paint a challenging picture for those considering a life in Canada. Requiring exceptional skills and careful consideration of the current economic and social landscape, Many Canadians are voicing concerns about a significant change in their healthcare system post-COVID. Before 2019, you could walk into a clinic anytime and secure a doctor's appointment on the same day. However, the scenario has transformed, and now people have to wait for weeks, and sometimes even months, for medical attention. Currently, the average wait time in Canada ranges from 20 to 27 weeks. So. If you're in the queue for the National Health Service, your turn might come approximately four months later. In case of a serious illness, you might need to head to the emergency department, where admissions are prioritized based on the severity of conditions like heart attacks or accidents, leaving others on hold. Even cancer screenings have taken a hit in priority, increasing the risk of late cancer diagnoses. In essence, Canada is no longer the healthcare haven it used to be. The fame deficiency seems to have shifted and the country now grapples with prolonged waiting times and a reprioritization that affects timely diagnoses. Some attribute these changes to the governance of Prime Minister Justin Roto, whose approval ratings are currently at their lowest. As the 2025 elections approach, it appears that tough times await him. Different opinions abound on whether Rodau's administration is responsible for these shifts. But one thing is certain. Canada is undergoing a notable transformation in its healthcare landscape.